the ultimate proving ground for robotic warriors. In order to win it all, our builders and their bots will have to conquer the gauntlet, crush the labyrinth, and stay alive in the fight to the finish. I'm Ahmed Zappa, and this right here next to me is Tanya Men. Why, thank you, Ahmed. Ahmed, you're the best. And thank you for joining us on our quest to find the best robotic competitors on the face of the planet. Let's meet our first set of competitors. Now, entering the arena out of the murky depths. He's a bot with a taste for battery acid. It's Hammerhead! This 203 pound bot will definitely turn heads. Its hydraulic pump steers its articulated chassis through tight corners. But don't think the steel machine is built to run and hide. Get in his way and that pneumatic flipper will hammer you. And Hammerhead was built by Israel Matthewson. Israel is a computer technician and father of two, soon to be three, from the heart of logging country, Medford, Oregon. And he pulled the inspiration for his extremely maneuverable robot from the nimble logging vehicles that harvest the local forests. We're Team Gray Matter. Our robot is Hammerhead. It drives like a car, but it's built like a tank. And his opponent, ready to shred some serious metal, this bot's built to slap some sense in his competition. It's Mini Rip. Crushing the scales at 188 pounds, Mini Rip features tank-style steering and a gear ratio tailor-made for ultimate pushing power. The steel bulldozer blade will take on all comers, and any who get nasty will get a slug upside the head gasket with Mini Rip's 10-inch hammer disc that spins at 2,300 RPM. And Mini Rip's Shredmaster is Chris Hanel. Chris is a computer support technician from North Carolina, but more than that, he's a former Robotica competitor. After a poor showing in season one, he's back with a brand new bot and his score to settle. We're a lightweight robotics. We've got mini rip coming up. We're gonna do the best we can with what we got. It's called the Gauntlet, and it makes boot camp look like band camp. And here's how it works. Bust through the wood, pummel the cans, beat the bricks, and waste the blocks. Through the rubble, then it's up the ramp, and through the glass, and the gauntlet's yours. Before we turn our tiny Terminators loose, let's go down to our Robotica science correspondent, Dan Danknick. Both these robots have powerful motors and ample ground clearance, but Mini Rip's plow is flat and not V-shaped, so it might collect too many paint cans and bricks, and he won't be able to move. Plus, driver Chris Hanold is not known to be bashful when it comes to speed. But he better guard against hitting these sand-filled cans too fast. Just one puncture, and the track is covered with sand. Hammerhead, meanwhile, with his brilliant adjustable suspension, will have no trouble climbing over anything in his path. Thanks, Dan. Dan, it's gauntlet time. Let's do it. Robots ready. Mini Rip with that monster plow pushes over the cans, gets on top of them there, seems to be flailing a bit. Ooh. Hammerhead takes a steady approach through the can, smooth around the turn, oh, but into the wall. Mini Rip still on those cans. Dan? I'm at this is an odd obstacle for a plowbot to get stuck on. Mini Rip should push through those easily. Looks like he finally loose, but now he hits the wall. And Hammerhead's climbing the rail. There he goes through the bricks, looking for the blocks. And he gets them, climbs over, and he's at the halfway point. Mini Rip trying to get things working now. He's into the bricks, and Hammerhead steals the blocks. Now we've got a confrontation. Hammerhead sideways. Mini Rip's got the position. Hammerhead's just spinning his tires. Mini Rip's going to ram him. That tight wheelbase is causing Mini Rip problems, Ahmed. The slightest turn on the control stick sends him straight into the wall. Hammerhead facing Mini Rip now. The plow gets underneath him. Mini Rip pulls back. Well, now they're going to go back to the course. OK. Hammerhead glides smoothly across the rubble. He's at the third turn, and now he's into the cans. Mini Rip's working on the blocks. Ahmed, it looks like Mini Rip set the height of his plow at exactly the wrong level. It's just high enough to let a block slip under it, and bricks are getting under there, too. It renders the plow largely useless if he's still having to climb over all the debris. And now he's on top of the cans again. 
Many Rip having problems, but none for Hammerhead. He's back at the starting area. He does have some wood jammed in his hinge, but it falls free and he tries for the ramp. This is where that articulated chassis may cause problems. He can't spin in place to get the right angle. He needs to back up, reposition, and take another run at it. Mini Rip surfing a sea of pants. Chris Hanna looks calm, but he is lagging. Mini Rip stuck against the rail. He goes backwards here, gets off the cans. Now he'll turn that plow forward again. More steering problems, that's a shame. And Hammerhead cannot get up the ramp. I wonder why he doesn't flip his wedge up at this point, Ahmed. It's getting caught on the ramp. Oh, his tires find traction, he gets up! But here comes Mini Rip, Hammerhead now breaking glass on the platform. I bet we get a showdown up here, Dan. That's only if Mini Rip can get up the ramp. He's wisely turning backwards to keep from jamming that plow. Hammerhead, meanwhile, breaking more glass. He's cleaning out the center of the platform. He backs across, gets another pain. And Mini Rip still has those tight steering problems on it. He has to hurry. Hammerhead is making quick work of the forest of glass. He's backing up, looking to clear out the corner. And here comes Mini Rip. He's up, baby. He's turning. Looks like he's going to go right after Hammerhead. Hammerhead breaks another pain. Mini Rip biding his time. Here he goes. The Mini Rip cam. He gets underneath him. He lifts Hammerhead's tires. And now he'll hit him again. Hammerhead's in a good place here, Ahmed. He's against that pillar, keeping Mini Rip from pushing him off the platform. Oh, he does the blow. Mini Rip smacks the pillar. Hammerhead goes right into the glass. One pain left. Strategy time, Ahmed. No one wants to break that last pain because it's too far away from the bonus glass. Mini Rip going for the knockout punch. He's underneath Hammerhead. The crowd cheering for it. Now Hammerhead free. Oh, and he breaks the glass. Mini Rip's got position, but he goes too early. Oh, he backs through it. The bonus pain is his. We've never seen it done like this before. Chris Handel gets the final 15 points. Nicely done. This is going to be close. We got to check the scores on this one. Ahmed Hammerhead was able to take an early lead due to Mini Rip steering problems, but Hammerhead had problems of his own at the ramp, which helped Mini Rip close the gap. The pushing match on the platform also failed to establish a clear advantage, but Mini Rip was in the right place at the right time for the bonus points. Hammerhead and Mini Rip tied. Amazing. What a run. Hammerhead and Mini Rip are tied at 75 points apiece. Tanya's down the floor. Tanya? All right, we have Chris and Greg handled with Mini Rip. Now, Mini Rip, lots of power. He's a scrappy little guy, isn't he? He sure is. He's built tough. He's solid. We had a little problem getting around him, but, uh, and a little problem driving, but I uh -huh. think we're improving from Series 1. Okay, and how do you know how to set the height of your plow? It's a guess. A guess? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So do you think that your design was, was a help or a hindrance? It's definitely a help this time around. If we got higher ground clearance, we can get over to mm -hmm. bricks and cans and stuff. A couple of times we had cans up under us and we were up on the edge, but you know, we yeah. always had enough wheels on the ground to get off of it and keep going around. Now, do you know what the score is? Nope. You tied 75 to 75. Good job, and right. we're going to see you in the labyrinth. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Hammerhead stole a wall for Mini Rip, but without the bonus pain, Israel Matthewson is left with a tie. Kenny is down with him now. Okay, here we have Israel Matthewson and his team, Hammerhead. Now, that was a great round of competition. I love your bot. Explain the design of your bot. Well, it's got uh, articulated steering so the body bends in the middle so that uh, it can get over obstacles a little bit better. It doesn't drive like a tank. It's attached by a little pivoting device, isn't it? Yeah, there's a, a, a center piece that swivels and it also turns back and forth to steer. Was it well suited for the gauntlet, you think? I thought so. We've got over the obstacles pretty well. And I noticed that that your opponent was going right for you all the time. How did What was going on when you when you noticed well, that he was... That's kind of the, the idea is to go for the other guy. The, the arena's uh, just narrow enough that neither one of us can get through. We had to uh, cross on a corner, so... All right, great round of competition. Congratulations, and we're going to see you in the labyrinth. Thank you. <laughs> Let's meet our next set of competitors now. Entering the arena out of a North Carolina kitchen comes a bot that's all attitude. She may be pretty in pink, but cross her and your fate will be worse than sleeping on the couch. It's pshht. This 205-pound robot features a direct drive system, textile steering, and oh-so-stylish Lexan armor. And with those four monster pneumatic wheels, this dame will walk all over you. And the lady at the controls is Tanya Bingham. Robotica's first female driver, Tanya, was inspired by her husband to create Psht. So, in between baking cookies and folding laundry, this North Carolina housewife assembled her deadly bot. We're Team TSR, and you thought robot building was only for men. And her opponent, straight from the rubble pile and into the center ring, here comes 201 pounds of bad bot attitude. It's Scrap. 
8.2. With its no frills hammer and lifting fork, Scrap 8.2 may look primitive, but those six wheels hold a secret. The middle ones are slightly lower for greater control. And its customized closed loop RC has pre programmed maneuvers, which will have this bot pirouetting around his competition. And the raider of the scrap heap is Devin Ostrom. Devin is a technical officer at Ryerson Polytechnic University in Toronto, where he has an entire room devoted to his collection of scrap parts. And it's from the depths of that mound of metal that he pulled the parts for his latest creation, Scrap 8.2. We're RTO, Ryerson Technical Officers. Our robot is called Scrap 8.2. We're not pretty, we're not fast, we're not the most expensive robot, but we're brutal and we're irresistible. We've already seen it once tonight, so we'll cut to the chase. Break the walls, beat the rubble, take the ramp, smash the glass, and win the game! Make me proud. And don't take no guff off the gauntlet. Robots ready. the line, motors through the cans, Scrap 8.2 just getting started, slow past the wood, now into the cans, bounces up high, and oh, now he's got one stuck underneath that plow, Devin Austin tries to see what's underneath him, but he's a bit stuck here, Psh, trying to make her way around the first turn, here's her bot cam, she's got it lined up, ooh, into the bricks and takes out the box, rookie driver Tanya Bingham is at the halfway point. Um, it, Scrap's higher front wheels actually encourage climbing, which is what got him stuck here. He's still at those cans. Tanya, meanwhile, having some steering trouble. Now she's in line through the block and the bricks. She stole two walls, and now the bots collide. Scrap trying to get off that can. Tanya looks like she can only turn left, and Scrap is free now. Oh, he climbs up the front, and psh, he turns. Now we're getting a pushing match psh, into the wall. There she spins left again. And now Scrap pushing her. Oh, backwards through one obstacle towards the second. Tanya's still spinning. Now they're over the blocks and psh, gets upended onto her side. And now onto her back. Tire spinning. Tanya Bingham is in trouble then. Amit in her optimum configuration psh, is bimodal. But right now her tires aren't finding traction. Scrap 8.2 drives right around her. And now he's clearing rubble. Takes out the rest of that brick wall. He's into the third turn. He's got time, Ahmed, but the real test is right here. That second wall of cans is waiting for him. He avoids most of them, but there he goes on top of one. Devin has to be careful. It looks like his plow is low enough to push the cans aside, but he keeps climbing on top. Ahmed, the wood is actually what's hurting him right now. That one can keeps getting hung up on the edge of the board, and when Scrap tries to push it, he ends up climbing instead. Devin's working it. Now he's free, he's at the starting area, ready to take on the ramp. And here's where those offset wheels really help you. No problem climbing the ramp. The fourth glass is his for the taking. Oh, nice spin move that takes out three pains with that tail. Amit, Devin designed that as a free swinging tail. It's unpowered, so it's only effective when strapped spin clockwise. Well, he's doing it to good effect so far on the platform. He backs up. Another spin move takes out two more. Looks like he's determined to use that tail on every piece of glass rather than driving through them. Well, it's a safe strategy, Amit, with psh, out. There's no hurry, and he doesn't want to drive off the edge. So he's using that tank-style steering to spin on his own axis, keep the weight over those middle wheels, which keeps him very secure up there. And he's down to four paint. And now three. Earlier, we saw Tanya only turning left. Now we see Scrap only turning right. He just misses that paint there. Now he takes it out with that front plow. Safe move, it's in the middle on the platform. And the spin move nails the final two. Here comes the bonus paint. Scrap with a running start, moves in slow. Looks like he's trying to get that bonus paint with that tail. Come on, drive through it, buddy. Now he pulls away. What is he trying to do here? There it is, he does use that tail, gets the 15 points. Devin Ostrom had big problems early, but persistence and patience paid off. He's won the gauntlet. Um, a single obstacle can make or break you in the gauntlet. And for Scrap 8.2, the cans nearly did him in. Once he fell behind, he knew he'd have to fight his opponent, and that success enabled him to win. And Scrap 8.2 takes it. An amazing race. Score there, Scrap 8.2, 70 to 65. Tanya is down with the winner right now. Tanya? All right, here we have Devin Ostrom and his team, Scrap 8.2. So, what was your strategy going into this round of competition? The strategy was to go slow and steady. We had a little bit of problems, but 
it went okay. <laughs> you did, you're, you're still shaking, I can see here. Huh? Uh, <laughs> so what made it happen for you, your power or your driving ability, would you say? Oh, gosh. Uh, it certainly wasn't my driving ability. <laughs> <laughs> it's the power of the bot. <laughs> so how come you had steering problems? Oh, well, also because I'm a little nervous and I haven't had much time to drive and test the robot. But uh, we'll do better. We'll get better. Well, congratulations. Scrap 8.2. Here we go for the next round of competition. So with everyone through the gauntlet, the scores look like this. It's Hammerhead and Mini Rip in a tie with 75 points apiece and Scrap 8.2 leading 70 to 65. Coming up, it's Labyrinth time and it'll take all the battery life they've got to make it through. And later, a fight to the finish that's sure to stop your heart. All this and more when Robotica continues. Robotica, consult your doctor before use. Welcome back to Robotica. We just saw Hammerhead and Mini Rip go head to head in the gauntlet and tie. And psh, lost a big lead by lying on her back, opening the door for Scrap 8.2 to take the win. Here's how the scores look so far. Hammerhead and Mini Rip are tied with 75 points each, and Scrap 8.2 is beating psh, 70 to 65. The robots took some major punishment in the gauntlet. Dan Danknick is down right now in the pits. Dan. Thanks, guys. Now, the first thing I noticed about Mini Rip is a real small wheelbase. That's the distance between the front and the back axles. Chris, what sort of advantages does this give you out there? It gives us a real tight turning radius so we can just about spin in place with no problems, and it helps us clear out debris. And Any disadvantages to it? Uh, it's a little diff more difficult to drive than the uh, longer base robots because uh, you know it's less stable than they are. Some great strategy out there. Looks like you came out unscathed. Anything to fix for the next round? I don't think so. Uh, we're going to look it over, but I'm pretty sure all we're going to have to do is charge, charge the batteries and we'll be ready to roll. Very good, very good. Now let's check on their competitor, Hammerhead. Israel, any uh, damage out there? Looks like you guys are working on uh, some kind of box here. Uh, yeah, it looks like my flipper stopped working in the middle of the match. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but we'll, uh, we'll open this box up here and find out. Was that the cause of your problem trying to climb the ramp? Yeah, the ramp was uh, pretty steep, so I wanted the flipper to be up so that I could get my front wheels onto it. Well, it was the flipper was down, so it kind of caused me to veer off a little bit. That's the story in the pits. Back to you. Dan rules. All right, now let's learn a little more about uh, the robot I like to call Hammerhead. This undulating steel mass is an ingenious blend of form and function. Hammerhead's articulated chassis is centered on a flexible pivot point for maximum maneuverability. The body of the robot can uh, move in two degrees. Uh, it's got two degrees of freedom left, right, and it also swivels. We designed it like that so that uh, it can handle large bumps uh, and still leave all four wheels on the ground. A lot of logging equipment is designed like this. They're able to turn around on a dime. We think it steers better than a standard differential type of steering on most robots. Hammerhead's automotive style differential enables the 13 inch foam filled tires to spin at different speeds for maximum control on tight turns. And he's hoping that with a combination of driving skill and design savvy, he'll be delivering a winner at Rebuff. So Hammerhead and Mini Rip are tied, and it all comes down to the labyrinth. While they get ready for that, let's get to know the Hanel brothers, builders of Mini Rip. Chris and Greg Hanel went straight to the drawing board and designed Mini Rip using the best elements from their past efforts. We put Mini Rip together out of parts from all six or all five of our previous robots. Driven by 24 volt bicycle motors, Mini Rip boasts a massive 12 horsepower. That power is augmented by a 10.5 to 1 gear reduction. And to make the most of Mini Rip's pushing power, Chris and Greg added a 30 inch steel bulldozer blade to the front. And anyone attacking the robot from behind will have to face this. A custom made 10 inch steel disc that spins at a deadly 2,300 RPM. Chris and Greg are confident they've got what it takes, and they'll try to prove it in this next event. We call it the Labyrinth, and the bot that survives it is the one that moves on and hears how it works. 
Six challenges guard six glass panes. The tougher the challenge, the more points the pane of glass is worth. Smash through the mall and get past the gates to the final pane, and the bonus points are yours. Now watch out for the Robotica Rats, because they're coming for you, baby. Let's go down to our robot expert, Dan Danknick, who is standing ringside. Thanks, Tanya. Hammerhead's design is really different. He's like two robots joined at the hip. He can move this way and this way at the same time. He's so flexible, he'll be able to breeze over the obstacles like the speed bumps. But he's going to have a hard time maneuvering in the corners, where his relatively large turning radius could spell trouble. Mini Rip has the same ground clearance as Hammerhead, but driver Chris Handel has got to get his speed under control. If he can do that, I think he's got the edge. Back to you. Thanks, Dan. Israel Matthewson's Hammerhead is pulling in on the left, and Chris Handel's Mini Rip has pulled in on the right. Both have added glass breakers for this event. It looks like Hammerhead and Mini Rip are in position, and we're ready to get our labyrinth on. Let's do it. Robots ready. is underway. We gotta fight Mini Rip lifted in the corner completely upright as Hammerhead goes after him. Oh, but Hammerhead loses a glass breaker as Mini Rip falls on him. Nice! He better back off, Ahmed. If he loses that other glass breaker, he's done for in this competition. He doesn't seem to care, Dan. He's still ramming Mini Rip, but now the plow gets underneath him. There's the Mini Rip cam as Hammerhead gets lifted. Oh, turn about his fair play, and Hammerhead is jammed in the turntable. Mini Rip slams him. And now Mini Rip backs off. Time for points. Chris Handel works across the rear speed bumps. These two bots came in here tied. It's crucial. They both get points quickly. It looks like Hammerhead is going towards the corner with the flip ramp and the sand. Both require very precise steering. Automotive style robots have notoriously had trouble with the sand because if you have to turn in a tight space, trailing wheels require more room to maneuver than tank steering. He's going for it. His wet sticks there. And he gets the 25 points. He's trying to show you up, man. Mini Rip going for the spikes. Lined it up backwards. He times it and 15 points for him. He's down by 10. He's coming out backwards too. Dan, why is that? I'm guessing to avoid denting his plow on the spikes on it. If he bangs it and bends it down, it could mess up his ground clear. Dan's got an answer for everything. Hammerhead's lining up the flip ramp. No room for mistakes here, and he swims right across. Gets 20 points. Israel stands his lead. Mini Rip tries to keep pace at the bridge. And this driving is all about clearance. That plow would definitely stick in the bridge if he goes forward. 20 more for Mini Rip. The lead is still 10 with two obstacles to go. Hammerhead's now in trouble, Ahmed. He has to turn completely around in this narrow alley, and there's very little room. He's doing a multi-point turn here, but it's taking an awful lot of time. Now he goes for the ramp. Oh, he's sideways. He lifted. Oh, somehow staying upright. Israel Matthewson almost bought it. Yeah, Ahmed, he can run upside down, but he have no glass breaker anymore. Mini Rip fighting his way back across the speed bumps. Chris looking to get a better vantage point here. Mini Rip is through the saloon door. He's going for the rollers. Boy, he just loves running this course backwards, Dan. Got an explanation here? Okay, his glass breakers are closer to his plow end, so going backwards gives him more time to accelerate them into the glass. Good enough. Mini Rip gets the 25 points. Now he's in the lead. The only obstacle left is the box, and the Hammerhead's being harassed by the Red Rat, who's finally gotten involved. Hammerhead up the rail. He's got to get by. Oh, he's going around, but he's still going the wrong way. The box is straight ahead. He's taking the long route over the speed bumps, and Great Rat's going to get in his way, too. He loses that glass breaker, but does get by. Maybe he's going after Mini Rip. Interesting situation here, Ahmed. If Hammerhead gets the box, he ties Chris, and it all comes down to the bone of his pain. If Mini Rip gets the box, but Hammerhead gets the bonus pain, we've got an overall tie, and both would move on to the fight to the finish. And the bots collide! Hammerhead on top of Mini Ramp, neither side back and down. And now they're both going for the jump. Oh, the box is straight ahead. Mini Rip seems to be holding the inside position here. Hammerhead back through the saloon doors, and now Mini Rip heads for the box. Israel's trying to get Hammerhead moving. He needs to catch up. Mini Rip, is, is he waiting for him? He turns around. Oh, backing into the box, and the Hammerhead joins him. Oh, who's going to get through first? Mini Rip is doing the pushing here. Oh, and wisely keeps the gap small just enough for him to slip through. And he's got the point! Hammerhead bumming, but he can still get the tie if he gets the bonus pain. There's the siren, and Mini Rip goes after Hammerhead. No way Mini Rip can lose. But he'd much rather face only one opponent on the fight to the finish platform than two. Hammerhead's got that wedge down. He needs to raise it up if he wants to knock down those gates. 
Hammerhead spinning those tires, trying to push Mini Rip out of the way. He hits those gates again, but Mini Rip's having none of it. They're, they're fighting at the saloon doors now. Time becoming a factor. Hammerhead fighting that steering, and now he's sideways at the gates. And I'm sure Mini Rip is content to leave him there. Even Handsome doesn't want him to reposition. Hammerhead not moving. He needs to hurry. Mini Rip got that hammer disc spinning now. He's attacking. Hammerhead gets going backwards. Gets a wheel up the gate. I don't know if he has the power to get through at that angle, though. Mini Rip's not letting him reposition. Oh, this is tense. I would love a three-way fight to the finish. But Hammerhead's losing valuable time here. He gets free, but he still can't push Mini Rip. The rats are mostly watching as Mini Rip gets under Hammerhead. Hammerhead's tires are spinning. And there's the buzzer. Oh, it's not meant to be. But what an incredible round of competition. Maybe the closest we've had all year. But in the end, Chris Handel and Mini Rip come out on top. Amit, there was no obstacle these bots couldn't handle as they cleaned up the labyrinth. It came down to a shoving match, and ultimately the hinged hammerhead was only pushing with half his butt, which gave Mini Rip the strength to hold him off and hang on to the victory. And we've got a first competitor in tonight's competition. It's Mini Rip. Mini Rip wins with 75 points over Hammerhead's 45. Tanya standing by with our glorious winner. Tanya? Hey everyone, here we have Chris and Greg Hennel representing Mini Rip. Wow, that was amazing. Tell me the story. What, what was it like? You guys you guys went right for each other. There's a lot of hostility going on oh, in there. They, uh, we both kind of got in each other's way there towards the end. <laughs> yeah. We were trying to, trying to gather some points. And I know they wanted that, big, that last big points, but... Uh, Tell me about the beginning, though. Right the from beginning, the beginning, what was your strategy? I was just going to try and get them pushed up against the wall, and, and they they had us against the wall pretty good. But I didn't, you know, I didn't try and move, so it just kind of stayed there, and we ended up on our wheels and got out first. Well, did you guys have a hard time getting your plow underneath Hammerhead? I think so because they're they're they've got an actuated wedge there that they can move up and down, mm -hmm. and I think they put it just above where the bottom of our plow goes. Normally, we'd run it flat on the ground to get under them easier, but, you know, we've got so many speed bumps and things here that we can't do that. We had to have some ground clearance. So the score is 75-45, and right. Mini Rip is going on to the fight to the finish. We can't wait. <laughs> Good job. Coming up, and Scrap 8.2 enter the labyrinth, but only one will live to talk about it, at least until the fight to the finish. I'll tell you this, it's not a good time to be a robot, but it's a great time to watch them smash into stuff. We've got more of that when Robotica returns. Scrap 8.2 and Psh are separated by five points. They'll run the labyrinth when we come back, so stay with us. Believe you me, you don't want to miss this. Robotica. Robotica is back. In our last competition, Mini Rip and Hammerhead nearly proved themselves equals again. They both handled obstacles with very little trouble. But for the second time, the bonus pain eluded Hammerhead, giving Mini Rip the victory. Going into the labyrinth, Scrap 8.2 is leading 70 to 65. But that can all change with the smash of the glass. It sure can, and as long as we're on the topic of Smash, Dan Danknick is down in the pits as our robots try to repair themselves from the gauntlet and prepare for the labyrinth. Thanks, guys. Well, that last competition really proves that slow and steady can win the race. Uh, Devin, uh, it looked like you got hung up a few times out there, but you were still able to crawl off. Well, what was happening? Oh, boy, I, I was really lucky. You know, I've, we put all sorts of features into the machine, like closed-loop velocity control and uh, six-wheel drive, and I put the forks, but even with all that stuff, like, nerves can just wreck everything. So you were just plain old nervous out there? I was really nervous, and, like, I was thinking, oh, am I picking up interference? Is there noise from cameras or something that's coming in? But I think it was me that was uh, just not using the technology that was there. But I was really lucky. Like, but it's also it's designed to be able to get out of situations. So everything worked out okay? You don't have to fix anything? You're ready to go for the labyrinth? The next one, all we have to do is fix our forks in the front. You can see they took a little bit of a beating. Great. And that, but uh, we were really lucky. Sounds really good. Lucky. Sounds good. Okay, well, let's see about their competition. Guys, uh, the good news is that you're only five points behind going into labyrinth, so you could probably make that up. Now tell us a little bit about your robot here. Compact. Yeah, the uh, we we run four independently driven uh, NPC motors at a 1.6 horsepower mixer, combined of about six and a half horsepower. And so. it looks like you have independent speed controls on each motor for reliability. Mm -hmm. And so if one goes out, the other ones will keep going. Oh yeah, yeah. And we got one for the weapon, so 
Everything is compact, it's very simple design, and uh, that's what we went with, with simplicity, make sure everything just works, and if anything breaks down, can interchange very easily and very quickly. That's a great design philosophy. Well, they're only a little bit behind, and uh, we'll clean up the robot, be ready for the labyrinth shortly. Back to you guys. Lost in the gauntlet, but not by much. If things had flipped the other way around, it might have been a different story. Before she tries to settle the score in the labyrinth, let's hear a story about a bot named Psst. As a first-time robot builder, Tanya Bingham wasn't afraid to challenge herself with some tricks that could scare even seasoned robotic competitors. Wheels are 14-inch, and they're foam-filled, and um, this makes my robot convertible, so if I flip over, I can still drive on it. Tanya decorated in her favorite pattern, pink camouflage. But while it may look like Barbie's dream car, psh, does have bite. For a weapon, I chose a melon cutter, which can cut up to two feet of steel, and I'm hoping to fling and throw my opponent. I just want men to know that women can do this sport as well, and that women roll. Now let's turn our attention to her opponent, the formidable Scrap. 8.2. For his latest creation, Devin Ostrom joined forces with two co-workers to build Scrap 8.2. These things are nice and sharp. Do a nice job, Tracy. It's called Scrap 8.2 because one, it's made out of scrap, junk that I had kicking around. Uh, 8.2 because the number of weeks that it's taken to put it together. Compared to its pricey high-tech competitors, Scrap 8.2 is downright primitive. The total cost for this recycled robot is about $400. For the controller, Devin converted a standard joystick into a one-of-a-kind drive system. It is a great joystick. This is the Uber joystick. It's got left and right, even has a rotational component built into it. Devin is sure that Scrap 8.2 will carry him from the bargain basement to the top of the heap. So we've got a really interesting battle on our hands here. It may come down to just strategy and luck. That's the best way, I always say. In the month of May, rabbits eat hay. <laughs> Right? Now, let's check in with Dan Dagnick, who is standing ringside. Thanks, Tanya. What you're about to see is a classic battle of brains versus brawn. It's a powerhouse. Four wheels, four motors, and the rest is all batteries. It's 200 pounds of brute force. However, Scrap 8.2 is a robot with a brain. While his outside may be made of scrap metal, the inside is truly innovative. He's got an onboard computer that controls the speed of the wheels on each side. In other words, it automatically compensates for a bumpy road. And that makes Scrap one of the most controllable robots in the competition. Back to you. Thanks, Dan. On the left is Tanya Bingham's and on the right, Devin Ostrom's Scrap 8.2. You can see the glass breakers they've added for this event. Labyrinth's got them. Nothing to do but watch, I suppose. Robotica. Robots ready. Turntable is moving. No scrapping inside. Looks like a mutual consent to go after points here. Is out first. She's headed toward the spikes. A little slow on the trigger here. Tanya Bingham is still getting the feel of how to drive her robot. She's got the angle and the timing. And the point 15 for her. Scrap 8.2 finally out of the turntable. He's through the saloon doors, heading for the box. Both robots going for low point obstacles first, testing their metal perhaps. Scrap taking his time. Now he's pushing the box smoothly, turns for the glass. Devin repositioning him. Ahmed, he's got his glass breaker at the back end of that long robot. He has to go in backwards to get those points. We're even in this competition. She's still tentative. She's getting coaching from her husband there, veteran robot builder Duan, who competed at Robotica last season. Ahmed, it looks like they're avoiding the suspension bridge, which the robot is very capable of handling. They might be afraid Tanya would drive off the edge and get stuck, but those big tires make that unlikely. Instead, they head over the speed bump, toward the corner with the flip ramp and the sand pit. This is a good place for points. And now the rats are getting involved, pinning Scrap 8.2 at the box. He does get past and heads over the jump. Easy pick, and Devin walking alongside his robot. He's turning toward the rollers now. Having some trouble on the speed bump by the looks of it. 
He gets free now, turns around, and it's going for the sand. Ahmed, this is the obstacle this robot was designed for. Big tires, four-wheel direct drive, and the Binghams gave it enough ground clearance to not kick sand into the drivetrain. Sure enough, she gets through easily, turns, and gets the 25 points. She's got the lead. Nice. Scrap still trying to get to those rollers. He wants to keep pace. Here's the scrap cam. Slow going. Ow! Off the wrecking ball. You see Devin. What is he doing here? He's trying to turn backwards, Ahmed, but he doesn't have a lot of room in the alley. Looks like he'll try it straight. The glass breaker doesn't reach. And he can't turn around. There it goes. 25 for him. Two obstacles left. And the rat's starting to interfere with... Amit, she wanted the flip ramp, but Tanya looks a little timid around the rat. Lon's trying to coach her now. It's either stay here or go clear across the arena to the suspension bridge, which she's already shown she doesn't want to try. Rat's pushing her now, but she's not moving, biding her time, perhaps. Now she's turning. Oh, and the rat's out of the way. She heads back toward the flip ramp through the saloon doors. She's got an open lane. Tanya being very controlled right now, Dan. Here's another situation where if she gets flipped, she's not bimodal with that glass breaker. Good timing on the ramp, though. And 20 points, the bridge is the only obstacle left. Scrap works his way back from the roller. There's the Scrap Cam. He seems to be spinning his tires. That bridge is up for grabs for whoever can get over there fastest. And Grey Rat's trying to slow Scrap down. He pushes past, works his way over the speed bumps, and He's back out. He's trying to line up the saloon doors. The bridge is in sight. Psst. Good timing coming out of the flip ramp and into the sand. Floundering a bit. Steering still an issue for Tanya. Here she comes. Bangs off the red rat. She doesn't seem in any hurry here, Dan. She's not, Ahmed, and I'll tell you why. She's going to head to the exit and wait. That bonus class is worth 30 points. It'll give her the overall win, even if Scrap gets the bridge. Great strategy. I don't know if Scrap realizes what's going on. He'd be better off ignoring the bridge and heading to the exit himself. But here he goes. He is across now, trying to spin, and he knocks the glass loose. That counts, baby. The obstacles are gone. There he breaks it. But he's at the opposite end of the arena from the bonus pane. There's the siren. Psst, at the gate, Terry Pickett. Here she goes. She is up over, and she gets the points. That will give her the win, baby. Tanya Bingham and her husband are pumped. He got to the fight to the finish last season, and she'll get there this season. A brilliant performance. Amit may have chosen other obstacles over the suspension bridge because of the type of obstacle it was, but ultimately its location is what made the difference. Scrap 8.2 may have cleared the bridge, but he got stranded at the back while he took the decisive bonus point. Yes, and takes the lap. So, beat Scrap 8.2, 90 to 60. That means Tanya Bingham moves on to the fight to the finish. But before we get to that, Tanya's down with our winner. Take it away, Tanya. Here we have Tanya Bingham representing all right, great job. Thank you. So I gotta tell you, I love this. You are the only female driver. Tell me about that. How long have you been driving for? Um, not too long. <laughs> I actually just kind of started, so. Really? Yeah. And yeah. what went through your mind? What was your strategy going into this round? Uh, just slow and easy. And he was telling me what to do. <laughs> so, and it was actually a whole lot easier than I thought, so. Okay, so do you think that this is definitely a sport for women? Oh, yeah, I want to oh, do it again. I want to destruct oh, yeah. more things. What was, what was the hardest obstacle, would you say, in this round? Um, I think the flipper thing, I was real nervous because I swore to God I was not going to go to that. Oh, really? Yeah. Were you afraid of getting stuck yeah. in the sand, too? No. Not, not at all? Sand, no. You knew that you could just blast right yeah. through it? Yeah, the sand was empty. So why did you avoid the bridge? Um, because I was a little nervous being a beginner driver that my wheel would go off the side, so I just avoided it. Well, you sure didn't look like a beginner driver today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Dawn, you've been helping her out here too. Yeah, just uh, trying to keep her calm. I think I knew she was able to do it. Her father's a race car driver, and I knew that she could do it. She had it in her, so she did it. So that's I'm very proud of my life. So. Okay, and I have to ask you this. Okay, she, you did it to give Amit and I a hard time, right? Mm -hmm. Why did you Why did you name your robot? Psst? Because that's like my famous saying when we're around the house. You're like, honey, get me a drink. I'm like, Psh. <laughs> it's so, don't talk to yeah. your hand. It's that. Honey, drive the robot for me. Psh. Well, we love the name. We're having a lot of fun with it on the show. And you are going to the fight to the finish. Great job. <laughs> Coming up, it's the bots from North Carolina. Mini Rip versus Psh in the fight to the finish. The Carolina Crushers tangle. The fight to the finish will make one of them a hero and the other one, well, no one ever remembers the other one anyway. It will all go down when Robotica returns.
Get ready to live. The fight to the finish when we come back. Robotica. Welcome back to Robotica. What a show we've had tonight. Mini Ripper and Hammerhead tied after the gauntlet, but after a monumental battle in the labyrinth, Mini Rip came out on top. Scrap 8.2 took the gauntlet, but in a definitive labyrinth, sent Scrap back to the heat. With limited hit time before the labyrinth, Chris Hanold found himself dealing with a hundred little things on his robot, Mini Rip. All right, right now, the flat tires, uh, I don't know how that happened, but we ran, ran without it because we were four-wheel drive. You can see if you look straight down there that that wheel is pointing in that way. Towards the end, we started chewing on them a little bit. It really didn't do a whole lot of damage, but it sheared off the little hammer. There's a bearing under this solenoid here. It looks like it shifted. Meanwhile, Psh seemed to have come through the competition spotless. Okay. But there is one factor at work which pit time can never gain. Nerves. I'm a little nervous because I know he has a really good robot. So, um, I'm a little nervous about it, but it's okay. Novice driver Tanya Bingham is going up against a true veteran in Chris, and Mini Rip's problems are all quite fixable. This fight to the finish may have very little to do with mechanics and everything to do with mentality. We've eliminated the rest, now we're left with the best. But only one can move on to the Robotica Finals. That's right, there can be only one. And to find him, we've devised a battle so brutal, it could only be called the fight to the finish. And here's how it works. Our two bots enter this elevated platform high above these razor-sharp spikes. They battle it out for one minute, and then the safety gates come crashing down. After that, it's an all-out war to be the only one left in the ring. The bots are in position. It's fight to the finish time, baby. Let's do it. The two teams have taken their positions in the skybox. This is the moment they've spent months preparing for. On the left is rookie Tanya Bingham with her husband, Duong. And here comes Psh. Tentatively sometimes, but she's proven her capabilities. She's added an extension to that front wedge. We'll see how effectively she uses it. And there's veteran Chris Hanold with his brother, Greg. And here comes Mini Rick. The pit time was put to good use and everything is in working order. Both bots had incredibly tight competitions getting here. Their matchups came down to the final buzzer in the labyrinth, and they both secured their rightful places on this platform by the narrowest of margins. But there's no such thing as a close victory in the fight to the finish. It's all or nothing. With a trip to the finals on the line, let's see how it goes down. Robots ready. turned upside down. Oh, she's driving that way now, but she's got to be disoriented. Mini Rip goes after her, and now she backs onto his plow, maybe trying to right herself, but no dice. She's pushing, and Mini Rip spins away and psh, hits the rail. Oh, blasted by each other. Psh, almost launches herself over the rail. Off another wall now. Mini Rip tries to get that plow in position. If she can use it to turn back over, she'll be much better off. It doesn't work. She's trying to get out of the corner, and Mini Rip pushes her up the wall. In the corner, spinning her wheels. Mini Rip's gonna try to push her over the edge. Oh, she falls loose now. Off the plow again, and she's in the clear. They square off. She goes up the rail, and Mini Rip misses with the plow. She backs away. Mini Rip again into the rail. She looks like she's playing a bit of keep away now. Funky spin move. She dodges him again, and now the game goes down. And Oriented on the controls and she's into the spikes. Chris Handel is the victor. He's got a hug from his competitors and he's got a spot in the robotic finals. You've got to give credit to Tanya Bingham and her robot. It's in its death throes there. She fought a hard match, but ultimately the day belongs to Chris Handel. Congratulations! There you go. Looks good on it. Ahmet, Tanya's steering problems were exploited immediately when these bots collided. Once it was upside down, everything was reversed. Left was right, backwards was forward. And Tanya couldn't get her robot righted despite several attempts. Even if she hadn't driven herself off when the gates dropped, Mini Rip would have probably finished the job. And there it is, 
in an incredible battle. Mini Rip stays alive and on the platform. We'll have a word with Chris Hanold when we return. So stay with us, Robot. We have Chris Hanold and his team, Mini Rip. Great round of competition. Now tell me about the time when Chris was flipped upside down. What was going on in your mind at that point? Well, we were glad that happened because it was going to be tough for him to get used to driving upside down. I don't think we had a lot of practice on that part. So uh, we kind of slowed down, took our time, tried to get to where we could you know, right. push him around a little bit. And, and then you got to trap in the corner. What was that all about? I was trying to get him over the edge before the fence dropped, you know, because that's kind of cool. But, you know, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. We got a time limit on that. So you had to back up again. Then you tried to do it again, right? Yeah, well, on hitting. great job. And we are going on to the Robotica Championship. Good. We'll see you there. Well, next, we meet four more robots will face each other. Who will be the best of the best? Well, you'll just have to catch us next time and see. For Tanya Memmi, Dan Dank, Dick, and myself, Ahmed Zappa, goodbye and robotica speed, my friends. Over and out. <laughs>